With the start of the year already hitting the world like a truck, why not look back at 2023 by looking at another figure released last year? This figure here is none other than Figma's iteration of Ruby Rose from the anime Ruby Ice Queendom, in which the titular character here acts as the main heroine and is capable of being kawaii and kicking ants. And she's all out of kawaii. So, let's take a good look! When first looking at the head, it's more or less your typical circular cranium covered with a run the mill Asian black hair. But unlike most anime characters that have a lavish feminine hair, Ruby possesses the tomboy hair design in which the bottom parts end with certain spikes, making Ruby stand out from her fellow anime waifus. But the highlight is the face in which, while retaining the typical anime design such as the large eyes, sharp nose, and a chin so sleek and sharp that it could be used as a melee weapon, Figma has succeeded in replicating Ruby's blue and majestic eyes as the blue crystal-like pupils are beautifully depicted that possess a mesmerizing aura that this is in addition to the small smile that when paired with the majestic eyes oozes Kawaii energy, but if you want a serious version of Ruby, there is this angry face that with the crossed eyebrows, intent filled eyes, and the open mouth portrays Ruby when she's venting her built up rage, which usually ends up in either Ruby taking on more than she can handle, or your typical teenage Korean outcome. And then there's this winking face that with the closed left eye and the other eye looking left perfectly portrays when Ruby's unable to hide her teenage urges and hits on anyone regardless of if they're an overage man with emotional damage or a crippled on life support. When moving to Ruby's attire, she's more or less all black with certain blood red finishes, perfectly replicating a goth attire. Yeah, you heard me right. Our beloved girl here is a gothic lolly. This is highlight through her chest which is more or less that of your average teenage girl's size, but it has potential to be more. Looking at the abdomen, it retains the red strings that emphasize Ruby's golf identity, alongside the arms that similar to the body is all black with a red finish at the end. And moving down to the skirt, Ruby has in possession a pair of let, the first of which happens to be a silver insignia of her surname, Rose. Talk about unhinged levels of narcissism. Which is beautifully colored with a shiny silver finish and is intricately inscribed with each layer being superbly portrayed. The other lead is literally a clip of bullets in which they are also superbly painted and can be used when firing her firearm. And when looking at the actual skirt, just like the rest of the outfit, it's all black with only the blood red finish, and as a singular solid piece, which might, at aesthetic pleasure, limits the leg movements, so no leg spread. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And moving further down, the legs are a peculiar bunch as not only are they slim to the bone, but also have an organic blend of a black and red paint job in which symbolizes Ruby's progression from an edgy goth girl to a full-on communist. The boots are of course the typical goth design in which the long height with the various knots alongside the mostly black but with a commie finish just matches Ruby's attire. But a point I can appreciate is that Ruby rather than pursuing a high heels favors the short heels that makes it suitable for movement but at the cost of stabbing power. And if you had an observant eye, Ruby Rose retains her iconic red cape that covers most of her back and highlights Ruby's identity as a communist. But really they are pretty well sculpted but pretty dull regarding paint job. But a slight disappointment is the fact that the cape rather than being composed of cloth with wires embedded like how Bandai adapts on their figures, Ruby here possesses an all out plastic cape composed of various pieces that tries to imitate a flexible cape but falls short. The symptoms seen before in Astolfo over here that makes it a pain in the ass regarding posability alongside playability. When regarding what Ruby is accompanied by what happened? Did your, did your balls drop off? Besides the faces, there are your various hands. Besides the open hands, there are your fists. 
big open hands to hold her sight, semi open hands to hold the underbarrel of the firearm mode, ordinary holding hands to hold the handle of the firearm, and a unique holding hand to grab the holster of the firearm. Talking about firearms, there is Ruby's distinguished rifle in which possesses a sleek body with the barrel and underbarrel being improportionately thick. It makes it one of the worst firearms to wield and to add extra gasoline to the dumpster fire, it's semi-automatic. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But to be frank, the sculpt is pretty good alongside the paint job. But looking at Ruby's main armament, in which the firearm unveils to become this weapon of death that is typical for a red, in which this version is superbly portrayed and puts the firearm to shame as seen through, the beautiful paint job on both the red casing and exterior that adds to the mechanical design of the sight, alongside the beautiful metallic silver applied to the sharp edges that highlights the fact that this is a deadly melee weapon that can inflict harm onto hostiles, both Nazis and Kaijus alike. And the size of this thing is on another level as not only does it dwarf the main heroine, but it's big enough for Harambe to use against Godzilla or even... When look at how Ruby stands, she's more or less your average Asian teenager in which she stands at 13 centimeters or 5.1 inches. It makes her invisible in the eyes of the Baba Yaga and Kaiju alike. There's Ruby next to Gumpla, SH Figots, Fellow Figma, Hired Toys, and with Figma being renowned for posability, when seeing Ruby's range, the head can move side to side, but up and down movement is non-existent. Shoulder movement is hindered by the cape, but by removing the cape, shoulders and arms are limitless. Elbows bend over 90 degrees, hand movement is pretty good, the chest wall divider for movement is hardly there, waist movement is non-existent, leg movement is limited by the skirt, knees bend over 90 degrees, decent feet movement, a toe bend, and of course the cape can allow for a certain range of movement. So, what is there left to say? Figma's iteration of Ruby of Rose is a good release as Figma succeeded in portraying the anime iteration into figure form as portrayed through a mesmerizing face, well-defined attire, and the glory of the weapons on the whole. But such highs are also met by their lows with the limited accessories and certain design choices that were forsaken by competing manufacturers that limit the posability of the figure. And of course, that price. With such points, I would say only get this figure if you're a Ruby fan, which seems to be a dying breed lately. If not, save your money and invest in better figures such as this or this. In doing so, I'm going to give the Figma Ruby Rose a ranking of a B+.